Hey everybody, welcome back, welcome back. So in today's wonderful tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a Python dashboard that displays uh, Ethereum blockchain analytics. So in this dashboard, we're gonna have two dropdowns and two graphs. This dropdown is going to allow the user to see, uh, to choose between volume uh, of a USD, ETH in the market, volume of ETH in the market, uh, uh, in the open and high historical values of ETH over the last um, seven or so years. Now, in the second graph, also a line chart, the user of this app will be able to see the total amount of unique addresses, sent, received, or just total. And unique addresses, as you probably know, uh, within the blockchain world is, um, is something that every smart contract and every digital wallet will actually have, right? It's like an identifier of a digital wallet or a smart contract. So this almost shows like the amount of activity on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, the last thing we're going to create in this, in this dashboard is we're gonna to connect to a live API um, within, within the, uh, the, beacon, the beacon chain API. Um, and we're going to create something similar to this where we have gas prices based on how fast you want your transaction to be to be to be mined to be um, uh, fulfilled and so we're going to connect to the API here and we're going to update this every four seconds all right so to get started this is everything in Python so to get started I would recommend going to my this link under the uh, video. It's my uh, GitHub link. Don't forget to fork it to star it, so you get notified of any new uh, updates to it. Every week, I try to update it with a new file, a new video, and then download the app.py file. Just click here, click on copy, go to your PyCharm or your VS Code or Atom, and just copy everything into there. All right. Once you have everything in there, you can also open these uh, CSV files if you want just to see what they look like. I have them on my computer, but you don't necessarily need to download them because I am automatically connecting to to the raw version to to their to the CSV online. So you don't have to download them. All right, so let's get started. Let's see how we build this this uh, Python uh, web app. First of all, we're importing all these libraries. Now you might not have all of them uh, install on your computer. So if you don't, you'll have to do this pip install, go to the terminal right here, pip install dash, click enter, then pip install dash bootstrap components, and this one, and then this one. You'll need all of this, whoops, all of this in order to, to get started. And then once you have everything installed, just click on the run button right here, and you'll see it, and then you'll see this link, click on the link, and then you'll see your 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 dashboard blockchain analytics all right so let's let's explain what's happening here first of all i'm going to read this csv sheet the gemini uh, eth uh, usd uh, csv sheet into a pandas data frame and then i'll just turn the date column into into a uh, a date time type a pandas date time type and the same thing with the second data frame. I'll read the daily active addresses, uh, a CSV sheet, and then turn it into a, the date column into a pandas date time type. So now both of them exist inside my app. And then I'm going to set up my API key. This API key, if you, you can easily get it. I put it inside the ENV file. I'm not going to show you because it's my API key, um, but you'll have to create a .env file and just um, put your API, uh, do like this, API key equals .env. Um, sorry, you do like this. Inside the ENV file, you'll do ENV equals, and then just give it your, your API key. You can get your API key. I'll give you this link under the video right here. Beacon chain, just sign up, go into there, and then in this link, settings, hashtag API, you'll see if you go up a little bit, you'll see your API key. All right, so make sure you put your API key right here in the ENV file, and then, and then this will be connected to your API. Here we're creating a function that will create the four different cards. So we have 
four different cards here, one, two, three, four. This is going to be through this function. All right, next. We have the um, app.layout. App.layout is everything that you see on the page, right? Let's, let's hashtag this out. Let's do like this, all of this. Hashtag all of this out just so we can see what it looks like. Control question mark or forward slash. Go back up to our to our layout. So now you see with without the callbacks, with everything hashed out, we only have a title, two labels, two drop downs, and two and two graphs. And you can see it right here. We have a title an empty uh, row with an empty children so there's nothing here this is where we're going to put the cards right here and then we have this row that has the label the h3 header eth value then the drop down and then an empty graph there's nothing inside this figure empty graph same thing here active ethereum the drop down and an empty graph now the drop down you can see options but they're not going to do anything these are just options right options here we're taking the df um, eth usd data frame we built right here take that and just uh, go to the columns and just just present the zero one the fourth column all the way to the end so we're only going to see um, four columns all the way to the end and this is why we see all of these columns all right, so now that we have our drop down and we have our graph, now we are going to use the callback to actually build the graphs and display the graphs on the page. So let's do that. Control question mark or control forward slash based on your keyboard. And now we have our graphs. So how do we do this? So what we're doing here is we're taking two inputs, uh, a component property of every input and we're, we're going to represent that inside the callback function. This call price selected will be this value, and this call address selected will be this value. Now, what are these values? These values are the drop down values. If you can see, this is the value of column price. Let's go up. Where is column price ID? Column price ID is right here. So the value of column price is open. Right, this is open, which means that this is open, which means that this is open, a, a string open. Now, if we change this to low, this will be low, and anything inside here will also be low. All right, second value we take is the second fu function argument call address selected, call a selected. This belongs to this ID. Let's see, there we go, column. Uh, call address so the value is this is the ori original value when we refresh the page this will be the original value uh, up there original total uh, count right here as a string but if I change this to receive count then this will be receive count this will be a new string so now that I am able to call into the callback function whatever option the user chooses in the drop down I'm going to use these strings these options as the Y column of my Plotly Express line chart so here I built a simple Plotly Express line chart with a DF ETH um, uh, USD data frame the X axis is going to be date and the Y axis is going to be the call P selected so remember call P selected is this which is a sign is taken from the value property of this drop down open so if this changes to low just changes to close this y axis becomes close right and then it and then it, you can see here the y axis close or if i change it to volume in eth this y axis becomes volume eth same thing with the second plotly express line chart it will take the y axis it will take the drop down string chosen and it will use this string as the y axis of this line chart and it can do that because this string is actually one of the columns of the of the CSV sheet you see here this is one of the columns all right so we'll build the two uh, line charts and the most important thing to remember is you are displaying the figures 
by returning these figures, assigning them, you return them in the callback function, so it means you assign them to the figure figure property of this component. So the first one, price fig, is going to return be assigned to the figure property of this component ID, which is right here. Component ID will be returned right here, like that, price fig. All right? And the second address fig, the second uh, line chart, this one, is returned to the second um, figure property of the second output, which is right here. ETH add graph, and this is going to be returned right here. Address fig. So every time, oops, every time we build a new figure, uh, this will be returned um, into the layout through the outputs. Everything you return in a callback function is returned to the output component property of the output in order. First figure, second figure, first figure, second figure. So that's how we have our figures. Now let's unhashtag these. I'm going to close this, pause it so I don't overuse the API like that. And now let's see what we have here. I just do, I'll play it once so you can see. Um, I'm going to um, call in the, the gas price, 39, 29, 29. And every four seconds, you'll see a new, a new dictionary because I'm doing the request every four seconds, a new dictionary. Okay, I'm going to pause it so I don't overuse the API. But what am I doing here? Here, I'm saying activate or trigger the callback function every time this refers to this, right? It's a component property of the input. So every every n intervals trigger the callback function. And we know that n intervals belongs to update trigger. So this belongs to right here, update trigger. n intervals, when you just start, n intervals equals uh, zero or, or none. But every every four seconds, because the interval property is four seconds, every four seconds, n interval will become will be triggered. So we'll have n n intervals. First it'll be zero, and after four seconds it'll be one, and after four seconds it'll be two and three and so on and so on. So we trigger it the first time when it's zero, and then when this callback is triggered, all of this happens. So let's see what happens here. First of all, we're doing the request class, and we're going to pass into the URL this this um, this string. Now, what is this string? This is the execution gas. Now, this is how I'm pulling the gas price from the Beacon Chain API. Now, how do I know this? I'll give you this link under the video. You will see this link right here. This is the API docs for Beacon Chain. And if you go to gas now, you'll see this is the gas now API. So it's API slash V1 execution gas now. API v1 execution gas now then you need your api key so we'll do question mark api key equals and this is our api key that we got from here from our env file right okay so we have our um api key we connect it we get our information we're going to read it into our into our uh, app as web uh, byte data that will decode the data into a string uh, we'll call it gas price string, and then we'll turn this string into a, a dictionary. So it looks just like this dictionary right here. And then we'll remove this dictionary. This request comes with a timestamp and price price US dollar. It's right here. Timestamp and price US dollar. Da, 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 da. But I, I'll take that out because I don't I don't want that inside the card. So I'll take these out. And then I just print it out. You'll see we printed out the, the dictionary right here. And then we are creating, we're using the function above the make card, right? All the way up here, remember? We're using this function to create the card header and the card body, and then just give it a class name with a, with a shadow. So it's gonna look like this. You see the shadow in the background? Card header and card body. Um, so for every Y inside the gas price data, for every Y, so it, every key, rapid, then fast, then standard, then slow, we'll create a DBC column. So there's going to be four DBC columns with four different cards. 
And this list of four DBC columns is going to be returned. Remember, any object that we return in the callback is returned to the component property, in this case, children of the output. So where is this? This ID, this ID, we're going to return the gas cards. It's a list of four columns. This is the ID, gas data display. So we turn it into the children. So now it's going to be like this. A list of these gas cards is a list of four columns, right? And that is how we do it. Let's run it, play, and see that every four seconds, it, it might not change. This will 31, 20. Oh, this was 21. Now it's 20, 20, 20. Every four seconds, we'll get a new dictionary that we're going to display inside the cards. Now, it might not change every four seconds because gas prices are, don't change so quickly. But after a minute or so, it might be a different gas price. All right, that is it. I hope you learned a lot. Make sure to sign up to, uh, um, to this Charming Data YouTube channel uh, and turn on your notifications because I'm going to continue creating uh, not only dashboard videos, but also videos on blockchain and transactions. And so you can get a better idea of how to how to work with with a blockchain, which is a very interesting topic. Um, always remember, we're better together. So help each other out. See you later.